damn mic. You tell me what is wrong with this picture. Got the most assisted customers in the room. Here I'm messing up orders. <laughs> there we go. <sighs> well, you do the same thing over and over, you're bound to mess up eventually. Just rule of probabilities. Yeah, well, that may be true, Mike. But, um, you've been just a little bit off recently. Seriously, Mike, why don't you get away? You know, take a break. Go on vacation. You know, get away from this place for a bit. I mean, psh, you're still going to be here when you get back. <laughs> and you know, as much hard work as you've been putting into this place, you could use it. We're preparing to expend the staff. You know, with the way that business has been picking up here, I know you could afford it. We're, we're in a bit of an adjustment period right now. Besides, <laughs> you'd take that pretty gal of yours someplace nice, exotic, like, uh, like Hawaii or uh, Fiji or shit like that. <laughs> You can't tell me you wouldn't like to see that gal of yours in a new bikini. <laughs> oh boy! Everything will get back. Uh-huh, boss. Why so shy, Mike? You were expecting me. Is this any way to treat an old friend? Here in your own place of business, hell, I was expecting at least a modicum of hospitality. I'm, I'm sorry, Dusty, I just wasn't thinking. Nah, I got this. Watch it. Hey, Garcon. Yeah, yeah, I saw the movie. Meet the boy. The waitress is a girl. That's right. Very good. And what else can you tell me about my usage of the word garçon in a given context? Well, it's actually considered pretty rude to refer to someone waiting on you as garçon. <laughs> well, looky here, Mike. Somebody was paying attention in a high school French class. Looks like we found your heir apparent. Be careful, though, he doesn't plan a coup d'etat or a hostile takeover before you're ready to relinquish the reins. <laughs> it's pretty good, Dusty. But, uh, he's still got a few drinks to get down. Well, that's okay. Because we don't need special drinks, Mike, but we need some special service. What's this young fellow's name? Chief. Chase! Well, since you're on to my game, perhaps I should address you as a gentleman. Sure. Mike, what can Monsieur Chase get for you? Um, I'll just I'll just take a water for now. Water? Well, hell, suit yourself. Monsieur Chase, I've developed a mighty thirst during my wanderings out in the hinterlands. Pick out one of your best ales and bring me a tall cold one, will you? Yeah. And then whenever you see it getting low, you bring me another one, all right? Yeah. Don't you worry. I'm very cosmopolitan. Been all over the world. Hell, just got back from France last week, so. so I'll make sure to tip you at the appropriate rate for these parts. Looks like business has been doing pretty good for you, Mike. Well, by some accounts, exponentially. 
She couldn't tell it by the looks of the place right here now. You know, we're, we're kind of more of a, a nighttime spot. Merci. <laughs> Mike, last time you and I talked, you were looking to expand your business. Double it. Looks like you executed that plan very well. I was reading the local papers, the best of edition. What do I see? Mike's Bar. Best bar food, best jukebox, best place to play pool, best place to hook up. Best place to hook up. I mean, hell, that's an impressive title, you know. Not the kind of thing you can just take away. Hell, why do you think half these people show up here half night after night? I'm very, very proud of all the, the accolades we've received. Hold on a second. Am I on sewer chase? I wasn't lying when I said I had developed a powerful thirst out there wandering the hinterlands. Well, something doesn't quite add up, Mike. It comes back to paying back the money that you borrowed to build this place you don't have. Well, hell, I'm not gonna count it. Thank you, Mom, Sewer Chase. Something just don't add up. You sweat a lot, Mike. You're coming down with a fever. It's just a little hot in here. Hadn't noticed. I've been very comfortable since coming in for my travels. I'm like anybody that looks at you can tell you're a man of modest taste. That's, that's, that's right, Dusty. The word is that pretty little wife of yours, Lily, and she's a high maintenance girl. Fancy jewelry, fine clothes. I don't know how she ended up with a schmuck like you, God only knows. Nice. We get by. Not my reader. Hmm. No. She wasn't in all this rich people bourgeoisie bullshit. We lived on a budget, Mike. How is Rita? She's fucking dead, Mike. She's been dead for two damn years. That's, that's awful. Damn right it's awful. She died of a brain aneurysm. In a hair salon. Sitting under one of them hair helmets, you know? The doctor said the heat probably set it off. Would happen sooner or later. Damn right it was horrible. By the time they found her, half her hair was burned off and I'd put a wig on her for the funeral. That must, that must have been hard. Point is, Mike, we gotta live within our means. Especially when you owe the people money. I mean, hell, if there's one thing we learned from this recession, you can't spend more money than you take in. Savings have shrunk. 401k's dried up. Mike. Come time to collect. Dusty, I don't, I don't have it right now. I just, I need a little bit longer. Time's come, Mike. I, I can't pay right now. That's all right, buddy. That's why we talked about the collateral. It's, it's not, it's not necessary. I always want to go into bartending business. And is it, this a bit extreme? Extreme? I want to pack you a couple more split rags. It's going to be extremely hot where you're going. Dusty, let me get another beer. Monsieur! He'll be right with you. 
damn it, can't you get someone else to do this or at least fix the fan? Oh, stop you bitching, Lillian. Time's tough. Time to tighten our belts up after all this excess.